Hello, I'm Malcolm Harslett. And I'm Janice Baker. Our special guests this week are Angela Tolley and Neil Ward. And we're talking about their unusual business and their connection with family drug support next on Our Time. I can almost, I can yodel. Actually, you're getting, you are getting better, aren't you? It does. It... Touch me. <laughs> it's getting better. <laughs> Look, <clears throat> a lot of people have actually contacted us to say, have you tried lemon and honey? Have you tried gargling with angel's wings? Have you tried all <laughs> sorts of weird stuff? The issue is that I have scar tissue on my larynx because I talk too much. And Gee, what a surprise. <laughs> Prior to Christmas, I did, um, we were doing up to 12 performances a day and I was playing characters and I just overstrained my voice and my larynx said, stop. So it did. It is taking a while though. The so. beauty is I've got a lovely female voice. So if you'd like some female voiceovers, I can do it. And the people that we're talking to this week are the people that we should be talking to <laughs> if we were looking for actors with unusual voices. Is that right? Neil and Angela, welcome to welcome. our time. Thanks. After welcome. all that Thanks, rubbish. <laughs> now, the easiest way to introduce you, I guess, is to introduce some of the people that you've basically introduced to the public. Because how would you describe what you do, Neil? Well, we're arts and entertainment publicists. We're um, specialists in that area. And uh, so we work on all uh, areas of, of that, uh, from big musicals to uh, small uh, classical concerts, exhibitions. I mean, we've worked with everyone in South Australia, most art, major arts well, organisations. Well, pretty much all over the country. So let's have a look at some of the faces that <laughs> everyone will know that you've looked after so, yes, in some in form or other. Ha cop these. Oh, cop these. <laughs> <laughs> Prunella Scales, Timothy West. Prunella, of course, from Faulty Towers. And uh, yeah. uh, she was here in Queen Victoria. Uh, show mm -hmm. Queen Victoria um, some years ago. Uh, there's Tom Berlinson. He was in a, a great Frank Sinatra looking very revival, young. looking very young. Not yeah. the man from Snowy River, no. we thought. Oh, Dear uh, Tony. Dear Tony Lamond, for those of you yes. who remember. Lovely Tony. Lovely oh, to work with some yeah, of these great son. people. I've her son, of course, Tony Sheldon That's has right. been... Yeah. yeah, we've worked with Tony. Tony Absolutely. as well. Brilliant. Last year in Priscilla, we did uh, the musical... Sh uh, the musical, the movie Shine, and that was Scott Hicks we yes. were working with there yeah. uh, all those years ago. Uh, Jeffrey Rush, um, Noah Taylor. He doesn't do interviews because I'd love to talk to him on this program. We've tried to get him. Maybe I should talk to oh. you. Oh, oh <laughs> lovely. Yeah, the lovely Lorraine lovely Desmond. Lorraine. Uh, she was in a show called High Society here many years ago. Yep, she was uh, also the first woman on television to have her own. Her and Tony uh, were the first show. two women on television. Tony with in Melbourne tonight and Lorraine with her own one woman show on the ABC. That's Sorry. Right. And Jill Perryman, we've worked with. This is oh, yes. Barry Humphreys sneaking up on himself. A uh, great shot by Steve Moranos. His leg's a bit uh, ghostly. Oh yes. oh, yes, we did um, Dear Debbie Reynolds. Yes. Uh, John Frost, who we've done a lot of work with, brought Debbie out to Australia a She few wasn't years happy, ago. was she, that she had to break her cabaret act so that the, the, the theatre could sell drinks in the interval? Oh, yes, that's true. Another story? Another story there. Ronnie Corbett, Donald Sinden, who were in a, a show that went down very well in Adelaide in Her Majesty. It's called Out of Order, mm -hmm. um, but it struggled in other states. Uh, Jackie Weaver, of course, worked with her a few She's times. A now a Hollywood Darling. movie star. Yeah, yeah. Huge star now. A sweetheart. Nancy Hayes, of course. Yes. Everyone's favourite musical yes. performer. I haven't got any of Jill Perryman, but we did work with Jill yeah, as well. So I was lady. very lucky, Albert. Years ago when he was in The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. All oh, right. Uh, Carolyn O'Connor, Chicago. Uh -huh. uh, great performer, Carolyn. Um, a lovely person as well. Yeah. She, yes. I mean, they're all lovely. <laughs> they're just some Great of the yeah. literally hundreds of people that you've been That's working right, and shows with we've worked for with. the different shows. That's right. So, Angela, how did you meet this fella and how did you end up working together? Well, we actually came together when we were studying communications at at McGill. Right here? Yeah. <laughs> right, right in this very place around. here? Yeah, right here. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Right amongst this bricks and mortar. Yeah, so we yeah. started off with something, with, with common ground, with our interests in radio and TV, theatre, and we found our own ways, Neil via radio and then to the Festival Centre, and I went into film initially, and, you know, we've gone through lots of different uh, stages and finally 
come, we came together to, to work together and then I defected over to the dark side, if you like, for a while. It came back and we've been, yeah. But together. you've been married for some... Ooh, yeah, 30, uh, more than 30 years, years yeah. Or there you go. Like, yeah, so really. it was a marriage yeah. made in heaven in more ways than one. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Congratulations on that. What, now, I guess most people don't realise that somebody has to let the public know that these performances exist. Well, that's right. Well, the publicity Where factor... Where do you start? Yeah, yeah is, a, is part of the marketing campaign. Uh, we looking after, we're looking after the free if you like, editorial publicity. So we're trying to get positive news stories out. Uh, and, of course, the media landscape has changed hugely since yeah. when, when we started, uh, hence those black and white photographs. But um, we're, we're... Yes, in... the old 10 by 8. 10 by 8. That nobody yes. sort of has anymore. No, that's right. You had built in 10 by 8s and colour transparencies. It's so much easier to email them now <laughs> <laughs> than yes. to get a call from a newspaper so saying, different. we're on deadline, we've yes. lost the transparencies, can you get oh. some more over here? Yeah. It's going to cost $25 Bike in a courier. Bike out of a job, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, but, but that, this, is, this still carries on the publicity work and I'm one of a, a group of people around Australia. There are not too many of us who focus only on arts and entertainment, mm. um, but we specialise in that and we have chosen to do that, rightly or wrongly, uh, and uh, so we fit in with the marketing uh, and we're an important part of the marketing too. We also do invitations to opening nights, social photographs, follow-up, all sorts of... Yeah, so it's all the, it's all the get... Get anybody that can give you a bit of a heave. That's home. right. The, you know, they talk about influencers these days yes. on social media. Well, we were doing it sort of a little yeah. earlier than that. In influencers through, way, you know, radio folks saying, "Hey, I saw a great show last night. It was Wicked. It was Jersey Boys. It was whatever it was." Yeah. Um, and same with um, print, you know, and columnists. But we're seeing a, a huge shrinkage of, uh, of you know, arts coverage in traditional media at the moment. Because yeah. of the um, uh, the network now being everybody on social media, do you think that's, that's right. and yeah, and the reaction is letting people go, sh you know shutting things down, yes. shedding staff, mm. they can't do as much, they can't do as much, they can't do as much. Well, in in uh, Perth and in, in Victoria and Melbourne, I guess there are other opportunities, but here in South Australia, there's virtually nothing left, is there? Uh, in this is television. Very, yeah, very yes. to be able to go and television. talk about... Yeah. That's right. You know, well, who's doing what? That's there. right. When I was starting out in the um, early 80s, you know, we had three morning TV programs yeah. in Adelaide on 7, 9 and 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was, there was uh, shows on the ABC, uh, uh, State Line, uh, can't remember, some of the other current affairs ones. They've all slowly dribbled away. And uh, it's oh. very hard too now uh, to get TV crews along to... Well, they anything. don't exist really either. And they've been cut back too. Angela, they've where do you back. feel it's going for you then in the future? Because these days we all have to make plans for, will we have a job next week, I <laughs> yeah. guess? Yeah, well, we just have to pick up every opportunity we can. Mm. And new things bob up all the time and we're usually up for it. We're ready to try something new. You know, one life and all that. We're up for a new adventure. Mm. And uh, working on the French Film Festival for the last few years, that's taken us back into the realm of film, which we love. I mean, I, I'm a Francophile. I particularly <laughs> love <laughs> the opportunity to, uh, to get back into that. And, yeah, just keep our eyes open and, uh, and try and adapt to new media and uh, the bloggers out there, all the different people who are... Um, but who are uh, I think for anybody of any age unless you've grown up with social media and you've grown up with mobile devices. It's very hard to really hook on to these things. A lot of people say to us via our Facebook page that are game enough to try Facebook, um, how they're a little afraid to go into those areas of even of emails and you say to people, well, it's the same as having a post box out the front. Mm. But is that difficult to get your story across, particularly to a theatre group who would normally have read about it in the paper or would have got some sort of invitation but now aren't connected with social media so they don't know those things are happening. That mm, That's right. We try to do a bit of both. We try to keep up with the traditional media where we can with yeah. listings and what they will take, what space is available, and we it's very competitive to get 
what space is left oh. um, as well. So, but we have a good reputation, so we, you know, we try so to. So you don't look set up that. any mad uh, publicity stunts? Not really. It's naked hard up the to. Main street or anything. <laughs> <laughs> you might do something special for a particular outlet, say the advertiser. We do specific photo shoots yeah, for we them do alone. Yeah, fashion shoots or, and that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, fashion yeah. shoots. You know, picking uh, up on. Things. Yeah, with the social media, it's we've tried also feed into uh, those. Uh, bloggers or those with sites that will um, help the product because we're doing things from everything from opera sometimes to you know Experimental pop rock art. concerts yeah. to you know ex I get art exhibition emails, so we can't yes, we can't necessarily awards, blog you know, yeah Hellman awards we can't just blog all that to you know have a super duper list yeah because yeah. we're squ switching across different you genres have to, of the have art to be form, and, so yeah. more different different tastes, different. Yeah. Yeah. And the companies generally will have have been been building their own lists. You know, where it, do you think it's going? Uh, I'm not sure. The jury's still a jury is still out. I think on, on whether this all really works. <laughs> I mm. don't know that with all the new, you know, the social media, the facebooking. Um, the Twitters and uh, for shows, particularly, sell yeah. Do I they mean, really that's, that's sell what tickets? It gets down I to. couldn't Does agree it with you more. I do think the jury tickets? is out. They yes. might one day. But it is about at the end of the day, if it's for show, it's about selling tickets. That's it right. is because that's, that's how it works. And, actually, and the we notice our clients. Sorry. Sorry, no, no, no. We <laughs> notice that our clients as well. If you uh, if you haven't got the traditional media in there. They're not as happy, strangely. I mean, it's that they thing want of to know you're it. doing the social media, yeah. but if you they don't still have plenty of the, you know, the meat and veg in there, yeah. whatever. You, well, it's print media, isn't you're it? You're not what earning your keep in yeah. black mm. and white. No, they'd yeah. be quick, they're going, well, but mm. isn't there, you know, yeah. isn't yeah. there an interview on the, you know, mainstream radio, yeah. or haven't we got this, uh, you know, at least a, you know, they'd prefer to see it in print, or, even if it was, yeah. if it ends up online. Yeah, no, I get they'd that. They'd say it's still in print, but yeah. it's not, <laughs> right. not tactile it's, print. You can't cut it out. It's a Look, funny um, thing. This may all pass one day. <laughs> well, that's true. Who knows what the next big thing will be? You're mm. absolutely right. Mm. Now, your life was affected in a way that no parent wants your life to be affected in. And we'll be back in a moment to talk to Angela and Neil about that. We're back with Angela Tolly and Neil Ward. We are. Angela, your son, sadly, is lost to you. And that's affected your life in ways that, as we said before, no parent ever wants to experience. Could you tell us what happened? Well, about two years ago, our son, who was struggling with a drug dependence, just, I suppose, felt that he couldn't face another day. And no one really knows what is it that, that tips you over the edge. But he, had a, he was struggling with connecting with the world, getting out there, finding his way, I suppose. And uh, people reach for drugs for different reasons, and his was a combination of lack of self-esteem, depression, a whole mixed bag. And they're often very uh, in inextricable. The uh, a drug dependence, and in this case for our son, it was uh, alcohol, which being legal and very accessible was really the biggest killer in our country. And, uh, How old was he, Angela? He was 28, yeah. Very and young. we kept close, and communication's really important. And uh, it was really, really hard, and there are a lot of families out there going through the same thing. Most people you talk to know, if it hasn't happened in their direct family, they know someone or someone um, mm. related to them who is struggling with some, some problematic issue to do with drugs. It's just, just really, really common and, uh, and very stigmatised. So people find often that they can't talk to people. Um, I found that my friends got me through and, you know, the family, we, we stuck together to try and help our son, kept close to him. Um, he lived around the never corner. Never abandoned him. He lived around the yep. corner and we saw him every day, which, of course, is very hard to get used to now. But at a time when it got really tough, I reached out to an organisation called Family Drug Support that really got me through. Sometimes you just 
hit a wall and you don't know where to turn. Mm -hmm. And they were there at the end of the phone. They have a 24-hour 24, 24 national helpline. And uh, that, that took me into their regular uh, support meetings where I met other people in these uh, rooms of collective wisdom where people talk about what's happening for them and share clues about and resources that you're not alone. and services. That you're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, from then I um, went on to volunteer for family drug support. I'm on the phone lines now. And, I mean, ultimately uh, we weren't able to save our son. I mean, you can't do that for them. And I guess that's how family drug support was able to really help us, just making us realise that we needed to look after ourselves, be there for our son, but we couldn't save him. Only he could do that. Was he um, speaking with people at that time? Was he on antidepressant that's a, Well, that's a or? really good point because he, like a lot of other um, people who have found themselves in this very dark place and are struggling, they offered the majority of them really want to change, make a change and find treatment. And he was always on a waiting list for detox or rehab and looking for answers, looking for answers himself as to why he wasn't, you know, getting his life together. Yeah. Trying all sorts of things, really trying, and his, he knew his family were there for him. And, and he, he wasn't alone in that, and I think that's what gets missed a lot in, in all the politics and that, that really we need the services there when people are ready to, to put their hand up for treatment that they can actually straight get through the Straight away. Mm. Because it's so straight easy. Straight away. Yes. Change it's a, your mind. a limited, you know, the planets align and oh. they're ready yes. and then you get this, But you've well, got to be able to do it then. No, we can't get yeah. you in. You'll have to call back in two weeks. Yeah. Well, which is crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, As a father... Oh, sorry. No, no, I was just going to say, though, because um, obviously he was looking for help. He was looking... Yeah. Um, to the family as well as to um, Yeah, and we talked about it and it was yeah, something that we kind of worked through together. And there's so much pain and loss that uh, goes with a dependence, uh, a drug dependence of any sort. Mm. And uh, it's really, uh, it's a, yeah, very, a very hard journey. It can be a very long one for people. So, oh, did he live alone? Both ways. Sorry, Angela. Yeah, did no, did both he ways. live alo alone, or was he, he with? He lived in a house. Um, share house. And the, no, he, well, he preferred to be on his own, but the person who owned the house would be there one or two days a week, which was great. It was a perfect balance. Right. Mm, we'd pop by and he'd come and see us too. So. Yeah, because you were close. Yeah. Neil, as a father, was it difficult for you? Did you feel a sense of guilt or anything because...? Oh, yes, I think initially, yes, because... Um, um... Could, we, could we go back to when he realised and you realised that he had a dependency, I suppose? Yes. Um... This shouldn't happen to us. Is that uh, the sort of feeling? We didn't bring you up for that. Did you feel like that? That's right. I suppose for Paris, uh, our son Paris, um, he had been off and on in difficult places since he was a boy, really. So we had he had seen uh, psychologists when he was in um, high school, and mm. so we were sort of. Um, you know, we, we knew what he could be like. He could be difficult sometimes. Uh, but was he... His dependency, was that more or less him trying to find a cure for himself? I think so. Or I escape. Think, self or escape. Self-medicate, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, escape. You know. But we're talking about alcohol here. That's right. He, he experimented with other drugs like most um, people of his age and, and, and younger. I mean, that's the fact that uh, young people... They are, do. Try, you know, they, they want to try different things, have mm. different experiences and... Drugs. That's what, something we've always got to remember, that teenagers particularly are wired to experience new things. That's right. Otherwise, nobody would do anything, you know, yeah, we'd all sit at home. Nothing has changed, really. Exactly. That, that we'd all know. sit at home on the phone talking to nobody, really. Um, Indeed. So, the, the fact that you're doing what you're doing with the counselling of people, this is just for parents... Or people this who for are anyone. looking, for, yeah, looking yeah, for um, support. Uh, the people who ring that that uh, helpline are um, mothers, fathers, siblings, sometimes grandparents, and sometimes they'll be ringing because they have a son or daughter who's forty or fifty, and they're not necessarily young young people. 
and they are often crying when they answer the phone. They're, they're really I desperate. Know, they're, which they're way to turn. Really worn out by it. Mm. Mm. You said to me before, um, it's not up to you to say, I know how you feel, this happened to me, my son, whatever. Mm. It's about listening. It's about being somebody to listen rather than to advise. It's amazing how advise. much that, yeah, that, that can make a difference. I feel that because of what we've been through, my experience gives me more, gives me that um, knowledge and compassion that I, I feel, you know, has a chance of helping other people. But even just listening to a person tell their story on the phone, you can, you can hear the change in their voice. It calms them down. Um, sometimes I'll listen for up to an hour to someone, and I really don't have to say very Too much, much. But I'm there if, they're, if, if they need me to interject, and I can, I can prompt them and ask the sort of questions that might help them find an answer mm. and just help mm. them get through another day. Because you really do need to take it one day at a time. And Family Drug Support taught me uh, strength and resilience and gave me strategies just to take deep breaths and one step at a time. Because the family are the closest person to the... To the uh, yes. ..person with a drug problem. And yeah. the closest to And they know them the best. Mm. So, yes. And sometimes they are really, you know, we, including <laughs> where yeah, we're, yeah. are really run down. You're down to the bearings and you don't, you know, you're going to pop a, you know, um, yeah. gasket. A, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, How did it and affect... And they're the reason that they often will give... Um, a drug-dependent person will often give that drug up and make a change is because the families haven't abandoned them. They've been there, maybe They've in the background, there, yeah. but they... They know that love is there, and so how did that affect the two of you, your relationship together? Okay, that's that's also yeah a good question. It was um, Paris had a young has a younger brother who's uh, living with us at the moment, and it's been very bonding for the three of us. Very, mm. well, that's from my perspective anyway. Very, yep, it has. I think yeah. it either divides people or it brings mm. them closer together. Yeah. And for mm. us, it's it's been very very strengthening. Yeah, and it's been, it was very difficult for his younger brother. How old's your younger brother? Really? He's uh, just two years younger, so okay, 26. 26. Yeah, mm. and he was, he was completing his studies and he had to stop. Suddenly we all start looking at our own families and thinking we could be in that position, you know. And look, we've got to take a short break and we'll be back in a moment. We should no. link our fingers there. No, no, we won't. Yeah. Do that. It's been fascinating talking to you. Um, and as you say, you know, this has brought you closer as a family. Um, there are families out there that are listening, probably going, "Well, who do I? Who can I talk to?" And obviously, you are one of those people that sit at the other end of the phone yeah. and give. Because we don't always have a face. No. It's a pity that phones it. What we all thought was going to happen, that we'd be able to look at somebody when we were talking to them on the phone. We, we can, but we don't use it. No, no we don't weird. Seem not for to that, that. No, You just need the no, voice, no, don't right. you? And the yeah. other thing you can do is go to the Family Drug Support group meetings, uh, which and held that was across a big Australia. Help for you, wasn't it? And that was yeah. a big help for us. We did a workshop together. Yes, too. yeah, and we did workshops yeah. with did them. Did you find that the men going or the fathers going had a, a bigger problem than women Often did? they do, they're because they, uh, often they are uh, want a quick fix yeah. as, yep. and they want to just, you know, my son needs a good talking to, yep. snap out of it, yep. this sort of thing. We're wasting our time doing all this mucking around, you know, but and, and that's what you've got to do, basically. Yep. You've got to know what you're saying. But It's not a swift kick up the backside. That's the point if, you're making. If only it was. If only it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's, it's not. It's a health issue. And it's that's, a health that's issue. That's what family yes. drug support is. You know, and we're not. We're not. We there's not such a thing as an average person. That's the reality, yeah. Yeah. and we have to learn to accept the differences between us all. Yep. To me, that's and and understanding that is sometimes the hardest thing. Well, that's it can right. be a, a chemi chemical imbalance too, mm. can't it? With um, depression and and all of that is um, something that nobody can actually see. That's, that's right. right. So many reasons. True. So yeah. um, you're still in business and you're still promoting things We're still around doing Australia, shows. Yes. particularly here in South Australia. And it's been just lovely to meet you both. Thanks. Mate. So until Thank next time, keep yourselves nice. Till then, Janice. Yes. Take care. See you. We'll see you soon. Thank you.